<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Baboon Show. Good evening to all. Our story tonight does not begin in London, but we sure hope it ends there. As do our three heroes, Tuck Bodgers, Itchy Rich, and Dr. Martin. Accessing the memory files in your noggin, you may recall that they ended up as black as the ace of shovels residing in southern Bolivia. Let's pick up the story with little Itchy on his way home from the market. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Peach. Now, boy, you are a mystery. You're black, but you can't dance. I seen you last night, and it was bad. Oh, um, that's kind of a long story. Oh, but thank you for the pickles. Bye-bye. Home, sweet, the home. And one... And that Dear listeners, you are no doubt concerned at this point that Itchy is about to jump off a cliff. Let us assure you that he will. But that is the only way they gain access to the hut, which is dangling from a precarious precipice high above the jungle, which is far, far below. And one, and a two, and a wow! I'm home! Oh, dash it all! You made me drop my voice and it broke! <clears throat> it broke. Well, I <clears throat> sound rather dashing now. <clears throat> Hello. Well done, Itchy. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> Here's your breakfast, boys. Eat up. Oh, yummy. Well, everybody, I have some amazing news. Followed by some disturbing news, then disappointment. But not necessarily in that order. In other words, something uninteresting, followed by something typical. First, we have discovered that this spotless leopard kitty litter we coloured ourselves with has actually absorbed itself in our very own DNA. Unbelievable! Yes, amazing, isn't it? Could one make money from such a substance? Yes, well, no. That's the next bit. We used it all up. Oh well, hard to come, easy go. And finally, this also confirms that we will stay like this. Always. Mm -hmm. So we're stuck here. Would be better if I was stuck on a deserted island. Then we would have a beach. I got stuck on a deserted island once. Until the truck came, of course. Don't you mean a boat? No, a truck. I was on a traffic island. Are you sure this was the best hut you could find? Believe me, it was the best. It may be hanging off the edge of a mountain by some kind of ropey, viney thing, but it is shelter, and we should not complain. Mr. Rich is right, and we have a magnificent view, lads. Hmm. When does the lease run out? When the rope snaps. Hey, that's just peachy. Ugh, I just paid the rent too. Here, lads. I made some parachutes for us. Put them on and pretend they work. A oh, jolly good show. What did you make them out of? Tea towels and underwear. So that's where they went. I hope you washed them. Geronimo! I can't believe this. We're in this nitty jungle again! with nothing but remnants of an old tea towel and underwear. Two very useful things, lads. Could be worse, you know. I was once stuck in an Arabian sinkhole with nothing but a slice of ham. Hmm, okay. This is like a walk in the park, then. A very overgrown park, that is. <laughs> You're jealous of my extremely dashing voice, aren't you, Richie? Itchy. You're lay. 
Okay? Something just bit me on the backside and I had an intense urge to, well, yodel. Yodel? Okay, over to you, Mr. Bodgers. Hmm, show me the bite mark. Oh, yes, you've been bitten by the yodeling ant. The yodeling what? Funny, I didn't hear it coming. <laughs> it's not the ant itself, but the victim it bites. Just one yodel? You will experience random urges to yodel every day for the next seven months. Oh, that's just dandy. Or was it years? Look, on the bright side, Doc, he'll cure anyone with hiccups who stands close enough. <laughs> yes, um, I say, Mr. Bodgers, how do we make sure we don't get bitten? Make your hat pointy, put a feather in it, and turn your trousers to shorts. How does this work? The ants will assume you've already been bitten. Oh, for the love of sanity. Oh, look, a tape player. Must have belonged to our next door neighbour before his lease ran out. It's got one song on it. Let's play it. Will you stop that? <laughs> it's hard enough restraining myself without you setting me up. Down, pesky cat. <coughs> That's the trouble with a yodeling traveller. Attracts the locals. Binga bunga. Minga wonga. Cowabunga! How good to see your lay, your lay. <coughs> ah, you get seen by me. Good to see you, lad. How did you find us? I fall out of tree. Oh, well, fancy that. Wingo Wonga, can you guide us out of the jungle? Okay, that easy. Alive? Oh, that hard. But I try. Don't worry, I'll pay you like last time. Plus two extra hubcaps. Oh, I mean, uh, indestructible butt flaps. Oh, ho, ho. follow me to river, where no black man swim. I'm sorry, what did he say? We'll need a raft of some kind, lads. Keep your eyes open. Our eyes are open, Tuck. My dear fellow, what he means is look for the things we can use. Oh, now I'm with you. Yes, I know you're with me. Well, slap me with a slimy tuna. Things are looking up, lads. What is it? What is it? Look up, lads. Is that our fridge? Hmm, it must have been a northwesterly when our lease ran out. Perfect, eh, boys? For a drink, maybe, but I don't see what... Ah, it's for a raft. Right, Mr. Bodgers? Precisely. Let me tie this rope around you, Mr. Witch. Now, stand here and don't move. Stand under the fridge? I don't follow. Watch and learn, boys. <laughs> ha! Works every time. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own two googly eyes. Stand a little boy underneath, which causes the fridge to fall out. Then yank the boy out quickly with the rope. Well, that's how you do it, boy. Amazing. I think Mr. Rich landed in the quicksand. Righto, I'll help him out. Bimba, wimba, humba. We've reached the river. Jolly good. I'll take the fridge. Minga wonga, you get the boys out of the sand pit. Oh, okay. 
We're cooking with whale fat now, boys. Yes, this shouldn't take us right to the ocean. Yodla he Oh, that's good to get out. Yes, that's correct. They are floating down the river on a fridge. Like a pair of nutcrackers, Tuck Bodgers is handy to have around. As from previous safaris, he learned to float the fridge with the doors facing up so that it does not sink so easy. River has a good current too. Anyone for a drink? Yes, please. Whoa! <laughs> Whoops. Oh, oh. I wish you would warn me before opening the fridge. So sorry. Um, I think something's caught on your shorts. Down, pesky lizard. <laughs> Mingle Wonga, you don't look so good. Nor like water. No, I, I mean your hair's messy. Mr. Ridge, what are you doing? I'm doing my Tai Chi routine. Helps me maintain my balance. <laughs> All Tai Chi is good for is assisting with constipation. Really? Which is why I might join you for a bit. Ho oh, ha ha! I catch fish. Good job, Mingo Wonga, to help our hunger. I'll put it in the freezer. Whoa! Whoops. Ooh. Ooh. From now on. Something's caught on your moustache. Pesky piranha. <laughs> From now on, I'll be in charge of what goes in and out of the fridge, okay? Okay. Okay. Mingo Wonga, why don't you like the water? Too wet. It's getting dark soon. Soon the mosquitoes will be like an uneducated sprinter, coming thick and fast. Eek, ah, tin. What is it? What is it? Not there, my village. Can't sleep in spare hut. Great. Great. Spiffing. I'll get the fish from the freezer. Whoa. Whoops. Sorry, Doctor. I say, Mingle Water. Can I ask why is it a spare hut? Most of the men in there went missing. You don't say. Hey, look, a musical pretension to welcome us. How lovely. By the way, we use that spare hut for the goat now.
on me I can see it come but I'm not gonna leave so much. I say, Minga Wonga, your wife seemed eager to see us go. Which wife? Um... Oh, um... Yes, she no like black white man. A little unnerving, I guess, like Mr. Potter's. Oh boy, I wish you didn't make me sleep on the fridge. Well, I can't sleep in a goat hut with anyone who might yodel in their sleep, okay? Yes, I know. Probably gave the fish a headache. I must say, Mingawanga, it's mighty decent of you to see us all the way to the river's end. No problem. Wife says make sure you go. Hmm. Tell me, boy, does your wife not peel and cut the vegetables when she cooks the evening meal? Oh, uh, you get special fish. When cook my meal, no peel, no cut, leave roots and dirt on, and leaves, and bark. Hmm, just pulls it out of the ground and throws it in the pot, eh? Well, it was... Your life. <laughs> it was delicious. It won't be too long until we reach the ocean now. And how would you know that? The water's getting more salty. Have you been tasting the water? No, I've tied a piece of string to a snail and I dip him in the water to test it. I see. Before, he was just going, Wee, aha, woohoo, I'm happy. But now? And now he's going, No, please, my eyes! I'm dying! Very effective method, Itchy. <laughs> Okay, we come to Big Blue now. I go. Job well done, old boy. All the best. Thank you so much. You will write us, won't you? Write on you? If you want tattoo, we should have done back at village. No, write a letter to us. Goodbye, Mingawonga, and thank you. Here's your payment. Oh ha ha! You be safe on Big Blue, where no big fish go hungry. Womba Pumba. We sure to send him a postcard, eh, boys? We shall indeed. Oh, look. There's Pitkins on the beach. Hey, up there! Mr. Bodgers, won't we need to attach some kind of sail to our raft? Sail? The way we're going, we don't need sails. He's got that twinkle in his eye. Pass me my rope, man. Ta. What will he do? Lasso an eastbound masked booby? <laughs> Aha. Here we go, lads. Hey, hey, hey. Got him. Everybody down below. Hop in, lads. Yes, you guessed it. Having lassoed the whale on the tail, our three heroes are now inside the fridge. What a versatile raft. They now will use it as a submersible. You could call it a submer fridge. Uh, no. You could call it a frigerine. Oh, well, you get the idea.
Well, I'll be Minga Wonka's uncle. You lassoed a whale. And by the tail of it. <laughs> It took me years to learn the technique. Well, we're not moving though. Any second now. Oh! There yeah. we go. There we go. I say, Mr. Budgeon, whoa. Is it going to be up and down like this the whole way, huh? Of course it will, boy. Don't worry. Before long, you won't even notice. Here. Yeah. Want some cheese? Ugh. No thanks. I'll pass too. Please yourself. More full strength, matured cheddar for me. <sighs> Days turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months. Caterpillars turn into butterflies. Oh boy, who writes this stuff? You're the last. Is it every time I pour myself a coffee, you get a yodel? It's not intentional, although it amuses me greatly. <sighs> if my calculations are correct, our fish diet should be coming to an end very soon, boys. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy. Really? I think so. Oh, that's smashing. Wonderful! Fantastic! Great! Peachy! Don't get excited yet, lads. I have to check outside first. Ha! Ah, land ho! Come on up, lads! Oh, what a sight for sword eyes. And sore ears. Paddle up close to the whale, boys. I'll take the rope off. Aye, aye, Mr. Bodgy Captain, sir. <laughs> yeah. Hi! Ah, there we go. Goodbye, Mr. Whale, and thank you. <laughs> And now we just float right into the harbour. I can't believe we've finally made it. Me too. All the stories I've got to tell my father. Oh, the stories I've got for my patients. Oh, the stories I've got for mm, my butler. What an odd looking boat that is. Meow. Meow. Hello there. I say, Bodges. What part of London do you think this is? Or what part of England, for that matter? Well, this is, um... Or this would be... Where the blazes are we? And so, after catching the wrong whale, and eating more fish than you can poke a hook at, our three friends ended up a little off the map. However, Smelling like and travelling like sardines can be useful, as they instantly got work in a canning factory and residence in a Chinese chimney. piano and Bo with his song Stronger. Thank you and good night. <laughs>